Hey, I'm Jeremy Stout, and I'm coming to you from the Nature Center at Steel Creek Park. Uh, as promised, here is a new dissection. Last time we took you through the dissection of a classic reptile, it was a black rat snake. Uh, now, today, we are going to dissect uh, this coyote right here and see what makes it tick. Uh, quick word of caution, of course, this kind of video was not for everybody. It, it is going to get uh, graphic and gory at times. Uh, and also, more importantly, uh, just a note about this specimen. Like the black rat snake, uh, this coyote was, was uh, hit by a car. Uh, sorry that it happened. I wish that it didn't happen. I'd rather this coyote be out in the environment uh, living its life um, that it was, uh, it was killed through, but through accidental means. Of course, we don't harvest animals at the Nature Center to make videos such as this. Uh, but if we do find a well-preserved animal, you know, say on the side of the road, uh, we'll bring it in and we'll process that for specimens at the Nature Center uh, or to make an educational video uh, such as this one. Uh, so again, just to say I, I'm sorry that this animal is no longer in the world of the living, uh, but what better way to uh, honor this species and this individual than to see if we can't learn something about it after, after the fact. Uh, so this, of course, is a fascinating species in our area. Uh, we've talked about on the Steel Creek Explorer before uh, the status of coyotes in our region. They weren't always here. This is a fairly recent immigration event of this species into our region. Uh, they came into our area as a response to the native gray and red wolves going locally extinct in our area. Uh, coyotes have probably uh, only been here in significant numbers uh, for a hundred years or less. Uh, so it's interesting that we have these species, uh, this species. Unfortunately, it's a, a hideously uh, mal-aligned animal in our area. Uh, yeah, they can be destructive. Uh, they can cause problems for uh, especially farmers. Uh, but overall, they don't pose the risk that people think they do. And so sadly, it's a species that gets persecuted sometimes, uh, and unrightfully so, in my opinion. Uh, but this one came from here in Bristol. I actually found this on Carden Hollow Road. Uh, as I was coming into work one day, uh, presumably was hit by a car. Uh, it's in great shape. I, I, I don't see a lot of external damage, uh, but I suspect when we get inside, we might see some damage and find out where it was hit. Uh, so we couldn't uh, weigh this animal. It was too large for the reference range of, of our scale. Uh, but I estimate that this particular coyote probably weighs between 35 and 40 pounds. Uh, so it's a good size canid. Uh, it is uh, related uh, to wolves and uh, gray wolves, red wolves, and even to the domestic dog. You might see some similarities there, uh, but this uh, is of course a wild animal. And what we will do, we can't get the weight, but we can get a length. from the tip of the snout to the base of the tail is 35 inches exactly. Uh, so some external anatomy here. Uh, you'll notice that uh, while it, it may superficially resemble a domestic dog, uh, it's got a coat pattern that's, that's pretty distinctive for the species. Uh, it's tawny underneath with uh, darker tones up top. Uh, you've also got uh, ears which are fully erect, which is unlike uh, most of our domestic dog species. Uh, and you have a longer and a pointier snout. Uh, and you can uh, get a glimpse of that. Our domestic dogs usually have uh, shortened snouts uh, with, with curved lower jaws. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the teeth of this animal. Uh, we'll open the jaw here. Uh, there are uh, folks who can actually tell how old a mammal is just by looking at the teeth. Uh, and I am certainly no expert at that. Uh, can't get it uh, with, within a, you know, any reasonable margin of error. Uh, but I can look at these teeth and see that they're pretty sharp. They're pretty pointy. Uh, this was probably a fairly young individual. Uh, all the teeth are fully erupted, uh, which means it was an adult. 
uh, but probably not more than a couple or three years old would be my guess. All right, uh, so from here on out, we'll go ahead and see if we can uh, get this, this animal skinned out, see some of the external musculature, uh, and then we'll go inside and look at some of the organs.
Uh, okay, so that's, that's about as good as we're going to get it for now. Uh, right off the bat, there, there are some things that we can see. We can see some musculature, uh, and this is uh, a lot of the same muscles that we have. Uh, a lot of the muscles of the chest, they have a triceps brachii and a biceps. They've got uh, some of the neck muscles, the pectoralis muscles. Uh, there's a deltoid back here. Virtually all of the same bones that we have are found uh, inside the, the coyote here. Uh, and one thing I do notice, so we've got some subdermal fat layers here. All right, we have that uh, underneath our skin sometimes. Uh, but one thing I do see here is an injury. Uh, now, uh, if you're watching this video, you'll see all sorts of injuries that I made to the musculature through my bad dissection here. Uh, but this right here uh, in the shoulder, uh, you see that this blood has gotten a, a good deal darker and it's, it's coagulated, unlike the, the wounds that I just made over here. Uh, this right here is, is a, a wound that this animal encountered uh, that might have been part of its, its demise. Uh, I don't think that this all by itself would be enough to, to kill it, uh, but it could have been part of that uh, vehicle strike that, that did kill it. Uh, so let's see, we're going to go ahead and start in up here at the neck and see what we can find in here and then we'll move down to the thoracic and the abdominal cavities and uh, see what we can see. You might recognize this structure because it was one of the first things we found uh, on the black rat snake. One of the things that all of the vertebrate animals called tetrapods. Tetrapods are all the vertebrates that are four limbed and breathe air. So, well, most of them breathe air anyway. So your amphibians, your salamanders and frogs are tetrapods. Your reptiles, uh, birds and mammals are tetrapods as well. And now that's kind of a funny term. Tetrapod means four foot, right? Uh, and I'm comparing this coyote to the snake that we dissected last time. Are snakes tetrapods? Well, they are actually. Even though they don't have four feet, uh, they come from four-footed ancestors. Uh, so we still consider them in the group tetrapods, even though they're, they're lacking feet altogether in most cases. Uh, but anyway, all that to say, this right here is this coyote's trachea. Uh, this is a specialized structure for uh, transmitting large quantities of air uh, into the lungs, which we might see in just a moment. Uh, and the lungs, of course, are where uh, it's going to pick back up carbon dioxide from all the cells in the body and expel that back up through the trachea 
and back out the mouth and the nose. Uh, so the coyotes is, is actually shorter than the black rat snake, uh, the coyotes trachea, uh, but it's a similar structure. It's cartilaginous in nature uh, and it, it's uh, made up of these uh, cartilaginous rings that offer support throughout. Uh, so, if we were to go a little bit deeper in, than this, we would find the esophagus sitting behind it. And you should have a couple of uh, major cardiovascular vessels on either side of this trachea, a carotid uh, artery and, and jugular vein. All right, so now this right here goes underneath the sternum uh, and the rib cage is here. Uh, and uh, accesses the, the lungs and the heart, uh, which are underneath here. Now, this is gonna be tricky. Uh, we're not gonna be able to use the scalpel for this job. Uh, if we wanna see the lungs and the heart, we're gonna have to bring in some, uh, some bigger guns. Lots of connective tissue that surrounds the um, muscles. You've encountered this connective tissue if you've uh, ever enjoyed uh, something like roast beef. Uh, you'll notice that you know you uh, you get some slow roasted cut of beef, uh, and it contains. Um, these muscle fibers, uh, this is the kind of muscle called skeletal muscle. Uh, it's found associated with bones and is responsible for the animal's movement. Um, but around the uh, muscle fibers themselves are these connective tissues, these mesenteries, uh, that hold the, the fibers together. Uh, now, I know you're probably thinking, boy, you wish I wasn't talking about, um, you know, eating muscle tissue while I dissect this, but hey, that's, that's where meat comes from, right? Not from a coyote, but from vertebrate tetrapod animals. And remember that this animal has the benefit of not dying uh, intentionally or willfully. This was an accidental death that we are now taking the opportunity to learn something from, to better our minds. All right, so we got the big layers of, of chest musculature gone. And this is, uh, I've dissected many animals, folks, but I've actually never done a canid before. I'm somewhat familiar with their bones, uh, but I'm not entirely sure the best place to uh, access this from uh, or how, how best to do this, but we're, we're going to give it our, our best shot here. I can feel the xiphoid process on the end of the sternum. Let's give a little cut here. try really hard to not obliterate these organs underneath because that's what we're going in here to see. Oh, it smells. Definitely got under the abdominal cavity. Blech. So my original intention was to cut through the sternum itself, but my bone clippers here are going to either side of the sternum and are cutting through the ribs. So.
Now, one of the things I want to be careful to do here uh, is uh, bones, uh, especially from a large animal, uh, can be jagged. Uh, while luckily there aren't a lot of uh, you know, pathogens to worry about being transmitted from something like a dog to a person, uh, you definitely wouldn't want to uh, you know, pierce a glove with one of these jagged ribs here. Uh, okay, so we're getting about to get into the thoracic cavity here. So this right here is the sternum, that's the breastbone. Uh, and then we have ribs on either side. Now I've just cut through the uh, left ribs, uh, roughly right where they meet the sternum. And yeah, I did say left, because uh, in anatomy we refer to the, the animal's right and left, not my right, which is here. Uh, so as we open this up, I'll try to clear some of this out in just a moment. There's, uh, th there's a lot we're gonna see uh, up here. Right off the bat, I can see a lung peeking at me. Let's see if we can clear this up a little bit. Okay, before I obliterate it any further, one thing I would like to show uh, is this separation between, so this is the thoracic region, so, so neck is the cervical region, uh, what contains the heart and the lungs is the thoracic region, and then primarily digestive organs are going to be found in the abdominal region. Uh, okay, so uh, your, your trachea uh, descends from the cervical into the, the thoracic region. Uh, but there is a special muscular divider uh, in mammals and birds uh, that's here at the base of the thoracic region, right at the base of these ribs here. There is this fleshy structure here. That is the diaphragm. Uh, and that is a structure that's not found in most vertebrates. Uh, this is only found in animals with complex pulmonary systems. Uh, so think animals with four chambered hearts and powerful lungs uh, for a fast paced metabolic lifestyle. Uh, so you might uh, be familiar with the term warm blooded. Uh, of course, a better term for mammals and birds is endothermic. Uh, they're capable of generating their own body heat inside their bodies. Uh, and while that is, uh, has lots of um, advantages, uh, it also comes at a tremendous cost. It has a very high energy input requirement. Mammals and birds have to eat pretty much all the time. Uh, but uh, so one of those uh, structures, the diaphragm, uh, serves to separate the abdominal cavity from the thoracic cavity. But what it also does uh, is provides the fleshy and muscular base uh, for lungs to inhale and exhale. Uh, so like I said, this is something you'll find in a mammal like this coyote or a bird, uh, but you don't find it in most reptiles. Interestingly enough, there is a reptile that you can find a fleshy diaphragm in, and it's the crocodilians. Uh, alligators and crocodiles uh, actually have an awfully lot in common with birds and mammals, uh, and possessing this diaphragm is one of them. All right, so now we're gonna cut through this and head further in. That was awful. So there's all sorts of generalizations we can make. Uh, so I, I mentioned that uh, mammals and birds uh, have a, a much stronger or a much higher energy demand for their um, increased metabolic lifestyles. Uh, that manifests in other ways as well. Uh, sure, there was blood on the uh, black rat snake, but you'll notice that there is a lot more in the coyote. Uh, and that's not just because the coyote's bigger. There's proportionately a lot more blood in the coyote. Uh, because another thing that uh, mammals uh, one of the things that differentiates them from reptiles, most reptiles, uh, is that they 
uh, have much higher energy demands. Uh, and so one of the anatomical implications for that uh, is that in addition to their higher energy demands, uh, they have to have uh, much greater um, uh, capacity to move oxygen and carbon dioxide around from their cells. Uh, so that means a more powerful heart uh, we're about to see uh, and uh, a whole lot more blood uh, relative to their body size than a, a comparably sized reptile. So uh, this specimen of course is different from a, uh, uh, a dissection specimen that you might get in a high school or college lab. Uh, those have usually been drained and, and a lot of the structures are a lot easier to find. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut the cameras off for a sec. We're gonna take the coyote outside to the water hose. We're gonna hose off uh, some of this insides a little bit. Uh, and so it might make the, uh, uh, the structures a little easier to find uh, when we come back. All right, we're back. Uh, I've got the uh, thoracic cavity and some of the abdominal cavity rinsed out a little bit. Don't know if it made things better or just made it worse. All right, so when you really look, and get a good look inside, what is it we see? Well, we can see uh, a big fleshy deflated right lung right here. All right. And over here, here's another big fleshy right lung. Uh, it's got its, uh, its lobes. And looky here, we have a large four chambered heart right in the center of either of these lungs. Got, uh, you can't really see them because of the uh, mesentery. Ah, here's an atrium on one side, atrium on the other. Uh, and we have um, a divided ventricle. That's the large fleshy part at the, uh, the posterior portion of the heart down here. Uh, so here's your, your major thoracic cavity organs. And as we go past this diaphragm we've cut, we find the largest internal organ in the mammal body, uh, and that is the liver, uh, which in the same uh, way as the, uh, in, uh, it performs the same function for the coyote that it does for the snake. Uh, it uh, helps create bile uh, for the uh, metabolism of fats, uh, and it also converts the um, uh, metabolic waste of the cells into urea, uh, which is passed through the urinary system. Uh, now, what we couldn't see in the snake, but we can see in the coyote here, is that the liver is divided into uh, several large sections. And one thing I'm gonna do is use the predictive power of science uh, to guess that coyote probably has a gallbladder in here. Uh, gallbladders are, are not found in every mammal, and especially some of the herbivores don't contain a gallbladder, which makes sense uh, because uh, gallbladders are for the storage of bile to be released when a meal that contains a large amount of fat is consumed. Generally speaking, plants don't contain as much fat uh, as animals. So carnivorous animals uh, are more like, likely to have a large and well-developed gallbladder uh, than an herbivorous mammal. And sure enough, All right, so we're gonna to start to wrap it up. Uh, there's a lot of the, uh, oh, we've got a, a pancreas sitting here in the mesentery that's sitting just anterior to the large stomach. Uh, interestingly, it feels like there might be something in the stomach. 
but I'm not sure my stomach can handle uh, opening that up and finding out what it is. Uh, we did process a roadkill coyote here at the Nature Center uh, that uh, we processed it for bones. And when we went out to find the skeleton uh, of the coyote, uh, we found mixed in with the coyote skeleton some squirrel bones. Uh, and our uh, best hypothesis was that uh, the squirrel bones were inside the stomach uh, when the coyote uh, decomposed. All right, so we've got loads of the liver, uh, large fleshy stomach. Uh, we've got, oh, a big mass of small intestines uh, that are sitting ventral to a uh, shorter but larger in body uh, large intestine here. Uh, let's see, here is a great big fleshy kidney right here on this side. And I'm gonna bet that if we go to the other side, yep, there's another great big fleshy kidney on the other side. Uh, large intestine here on the animal's right side. All right, there you have it folks. A really smelly coyote dissection. <laughs>